good morning to all of you. Dignitaries on the dais, of the dais. Very distinguished vice chancellors and heads of the institutions. I'm very happy to be part of this uh, BW Education event, particularly because they, it is uh, focusing on higher education and industry coming closer together. I will not repeat what Dr. Batra said. Batra has touched upon every aspect of higher education and where we should go, what are the challenges, very in a detailed way. And he keeps writing also. So uh, many of you might have know, known him because I also had interaction with him three times when I was a director of IIT Guwahati. Today I'm here to just briefly to tell you about industry academy interaction, how important it is and what AICTE is being doing in the last six to seven years because my entry into All India Council for Technical Education is only three, four months old. So it's not what we have envisaged, but it is what AICTE is being doing in this space and how important it is for becoming Vishwaguru. I think uh, we need to really focus this closer interaction between academy and in, uh, I mean, uh, industry. Why this is important? Can you put this slide, please? Yeah. This, uh, and also, anyway, there are a lot of uh, engineering institutions here. So I thought, uh, let me show you that we recently, you know, brought out our approval process handbook for the year 23, uh, 24, wherein we have brought a lot change, a lot many changes in favor of the, uh, both the institutions and as well as the students. The whole idea is, you know, we have to make the rules simpler, but at the same time also uh, everybody should be able to follow them and also maintain the quality. Please remember quality is going to be the main issue. Now we have given you a sort of a, a little bit of flexibility, but now we will come back with inspections. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> because that's very important. We have given you all the what you wanted. I actually, we tried to understand all your difficulties and we have looked at very carefully all your requests and uh, as much as possible, whether it is teacher-student ratio or, uh, you know, the ranking, you know, whether uh, NBA accreditation. And also we are slowly thinking we should not be worried about 30, 60 seats counts. We will be very little more flexible to give you additional 30, additional 60, because there are institutions running thousands of uh, seats in some in colleges. So uh, there should not be any disadvantage to the people who are looking at very positively. Uh, friends, multidisciplinary education, teachers training, research and innovation are a key for us to really grow in this space of higher education. Thanks to national education policy, which has brought uh, a lot of uh, hope in us. And also, I think many of us are coming together to discuss uh, challenging issues and see what can be done and how we can lead the world. There are numbers, but quality we have to improve. There is a lot, lot needs to be done in terms of quality. So our all collective goal is to make Indian students a 21st innovator or interpreter. This is little side. You can use it yourself. Yeah, yeah. You just point it. Yeah, you have a mic, color mic? Or if it is not there, then I can't see the screens here. <laughs> it's neither that side, this side. Color mic is there? You can yeah. take this. No, no, color mic is there, fine. We can also sit there, so it's... Yeah, you sit there, and then you can come back, so that everyone can see. It's a job-oriented education, even though we don't like that, and our philosophy is not that, and Indian philosophy is never that, okay? 
when a gurukula system and uh, we go back to the old school thoughts, all is completely about lifelong learning. Okay? And there is nothing like uh, job oriented learning. But here, but in the last 100 years, I think we are focused too much on job oriented learning. But suddenly we may not be able to change that. So today, when we were students, let me tell you, I mean, I'm not going for 100 years back. When we were students in the 80s, we never heard about what is called placement. Okay? Many of the engineers sitting here in this room will agree with me. There is nothing called placement. So we all joined. Why did we join civil engineering? It is only to, oh, I get a job in PWD. That was only PWD and electricity world are the only ones who were hiring us at that time, engineers. And I don't think uh, even Visheshraya would have said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, when, because during this period also, it is only these two uh, agencies in the infrastructure area uh, where engineers were uh, really hired. But the space has changed, ladies and gentlemen, it's quite, quite drastically. Today we have uh, uh, disruption, actually, in every sphere of our life. The way communication and mobile technologies have really got into our lives, uh, things are mind-boggling. And the technology-oriented and the emerging areas are in every sphere of every engineering field. So the, we cannot be looking at what we were when we were students. We have to look at completely differently now that uh, these students, uh, as somebody was mentioning, uh, that the students really would like to have fun in the college rather than uh, rote learning. And I have seen, even in that Indian Institute of Science, when I was teaching, this was a real, real difference. We now, I never had a class more than 20. In my entire 30 years of career, my class strength was 30 years, sorry, 20 size, maximum. Okay, because we don't have the undergraduate program at IAC. So we more look at what we do, research. We used to, every time I teach a course, it will be completely different, same course. So we had a lot of freedom. Academic freedom was there, and the way we conduct examination was different. The way uh, the, the curriculum is being taught is different. And uh, when uh, sometimes, you know, I had students of one or two students in the classroom. So that time we were able to even convert them into a textbooks. So, <laughs> so because there was a lot of action with one to one. But I don't think that that luxury uh, can be applied uh, to every institution. So I'm, I'm not giving you a very wrong picture to you. So we have a 1.4 billion people to satisfy. And we are still in higher education sector, only 26% GR ratio. So we have a bigger role to really uh, bring many into higher education fold. So in this, uh, we cannot be doing alone. That's where the, we require uh, the industry partnership. Because finally, students are looking for jobs. And the jobs are given by these uh, industries, or uh, government, public sector, whatever you call, OK? So we need to come together to train these students for future-ready jobs because the, 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 the jobs are also changing. Today, with uh, chat GPT-4 coming in, um, it's, uh, many jobs profiles will be completely vanished, not changed, vanished. They will just vanish and the new profiles will come. So we don't need to be scared because these tools are developed by us. They should be self servient to us, then we really need to be worried about them. But what do we do, you know, what do we, what we should be doing in such a disruptive technologies coming into our lives? How are we going to prepare our students for the future? This is a big challenge. So this is where I see that industry coming close to the academia will play an important role. So let us look at what AICT is doing, whether it is in skill development and enhancement, faculty development, and even ODL. Today, another th important thing also is vocational education, distance education, and regular classroom education are all synchronizing today. Particularly, uh, I think uh, uh, Professor Pankaj Mitchell will talk about National Credit Framework, I hope, uh, which has been released on the, uh, April 10th which actually tries to unify all these uh, 
different, uh, you know, vocational education and distance education, all are on the same platform today. So we don't need to really so much worry about, oh, distance education is a second rate. Uh, all that is gone. We have to start accepting that these are all on the same platform. And we have to deliver quality. See, please understand, there will be a lot of issues because our mindset will not accept both are equal. But we have to see uh, the, with the kind of COVID coming in, so we already started accepting. Online education is also part and part of us. So blended education may be better. So I am not here to dis deliberate or discuss what is better and what is best that is left to you, the who is going to be doing in the classrooms. But what AACT is trying to do is trying to do excellence in research, how to create research environment and innovation in the academic institutions. And particularly, we are focusing more on the engineering institutions, which are affiliated or autonomous. And then how do we provide the internship? All of you know that internship, we, AACT has then made it compulsory. And uh, please remember one more thing. Again, whenever I say compulsory and all these words, we always say this is the guidelines <laughs> from AACT. Following or not following is your uh, 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 challenge because we are in a democratic world. So, and then we also, employability enhancement we are focusing. We are uh, also coming back to the courses, content development, and also content development in regional languages. It's a very, very important. Many of you might still be hangover with English, and we are all, because we all got educated like that, but definitely we need to now look at to give uh, more options for our students. Uh, with uh, regional languages is a focus where they can think, learn in that language, but communicate to the whole world and become a global engineer in English, there's no problem. So entrepreneurial, that's another focus, I think, India. India has to be the leader uh, by uh, 2047. I think we need to focus more on startups and entrepreneurial activities. And at least, uh, I, I say, 5 to 10% of our students should become an entrepreneur. I'm not saying successful, but uh, 5 to 10% of the students. So that's a very big challenge. So we can see the number of the companies where we are tying up with and we are helping. See, tie, we tying up means we, we are trying to help you with the, uh, the linkages of these companies. They are all global companies. So luckily, many of the Indian diaspora is also doing very well in those companies. It's not operating. Can you, can you go to the next slide, please? Oops, sorry. Leave it there. I, I think it's working now. So we have signed MOUs with uh, a large number of industries. So with government agencies about, uh, when I say industries, as I told you, it's not really, really core. I mean, world, don't go by the word. Any, you know, uh, agency which is uh, giving jobs. So government institutions in the universities with private limited NGOs are also, NGOs are also today offering, you know, some sort of a job to the uh, people. So total number of MOU signed, we have about 150, where their focus is on faculty development, online courses, entrepreneurial promotion, content development, education analytics, employability enhancement, skill assessment and enhancement, and internship and placement, and also uh, excellence in research and innovation. So some of the transformative initiative of AICT in the last six to eight years, which you all agree with me, I think as a, if you uh, don't consider me as a chairman of AICT for a minute, and look at these programs, they are really, really uh, out of the box for a government agency which is meant for an approval process, okay? So whether it is revision of curriculum, again, I wanted to highlight here, we have done that in 2017-18, now we have restarted that again to bring in industry relevance into our courses. So many of you, who, who, we means what? I think in AACT, I hardly have 80 people permanent staff. Okay, and about 300 people with consultants and other things. They don't do anything, they just do the, your travel arrangement. It's done by the, the faculty, professors of IITs, NITs, or centrally funded technical institutions. Okay, uh, all these curriculum development is all done. Many of you who are sitting in this also are part of that process. So 
this is uh, even we are focusing on teachers training and faculty development program mandatory induction holistic development this is another one thing uh, on a holistic development we are also uh, heavily focusing so our induction program of 3 weeks emphasizes on uh, universal human values which is i think is very critical for the younger generation because they are too much uh, you know tech savvy and they are uh, always engrossed in the mobiles and other thing so they need to come out of that for a while you know think about their neighbors friends uh, family and all that you know that is run through the uh, human values then we also have a very strong group mic innovation cell on promoting innovation startups and internship policy and then exam reforms so our examinations also have to reform and too many exams we had a lot of discussions on that also very recently uh, that uh, how do we make it ma more student friendly there should not be so much stress on clearing these examinations in one one such initiative was i really liked uh, is iit kanpur has developed i think because some many of your parents also so your children when you are trying to put them into jee because it's an aspiration for getting into iit so I, iit uh, kanpur has developed a, a tool which is uh, self learning tool for preparation for jee because these coaching classes are really troubling them so that is also very expensive also so this is a self learning free online tool i think uh, iit kanpur is going to launch which will be very useful you know some of the some of you should look at that then uh, also an institute perspective plan developments industry readiness mandatory cells have been created and i also would like to say indian knowledge system is very very important very critical please uh, understand i will show you one or two slides why it is important and the whole world is already accepting india has a huge knowledge somewhere we lost it in the last 100 i think it's a good time to revive we need to go nook and corner it it will not happen in one year or two years it will take another decade to of work putting together and i think we should all have patience to look at it and we should not call this as a pseudo science it's very sad actually and that means we are not very proud of what is our ancestors have done so maybe objectively we will evaluate we are a society which always evaluated everything objectively so let's let's do that even now why don't we have running out of patience saying that uh, it is a pseudo science so let's study that record them but it doesn't uh, and all of us know that it doesn't happen in 6 uh, months 8 months or one year it takes time we got to what we have lost in 150 years to bring it back to focus or even to know a little bit about it takes at least another decades or two decades of work i think we need to do that so Uh, now we are in the phase of implementation of nep which is a big big thing i think we need to start looking at because now uh, uh, particularly engineering institutions let me tell you now national credit framework is out we are going to immediately roll out how multiple entry exit can happen in engineering that assurance i can give you who will roll out some of you will be involved in that to decide and tell us i did uh, request professor pankaj mittal also to guide us how to do that in engineering because we are already a four year program how do we do multiple entry exit without affecting the major things okay so uh, and uh, academic bank of credit is also has come so we need to look start looking at that carefully because now we have a framework which is signed by the honorable minister and released for the public okay till that it was a draft policy shifting focus from cognitive skill to non cognitive skills is one other area where we need to focus that's where industry interaction is very critical and i will leave out the international higher education uh, internationalization of higher education uh, i'll also talk about mandatory internship and also national apprentice step uh, uh, also because as i told you uh, we may be talking in the nsqf level 4.5 and above because we are only talking beyond diploma and uh, other things but we also look at what is our input where is it that coming from so when we synchronize the vocational higher education and distance learning i think we need to also look at where are the input coming from for us so that's where we need to understand there and uh, some of the initiatives i will uh, uh, highlight is national education alliance for technology of aict one which is very very important and then we also talk about uh, uh, this martin day hackathons and then uh, one nation one data 
I will also highlight to you what is One Nation, One Data, so that you don't need to really submit your data to NBA, NAC, AICT, university differently. And uh, each one you will be asking some professor to do it, then he will be doing his own numbers also there. <laughs> so, but this tool will stop that. Say, what you will do is it will pop up, you send it yourself, 120 your students are here, now you are putting up 150. So, so you can correct yourself. So, that's a tool, One Nation, One Data, it's almost ready. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan's committee has also given a green signal. I hope uh, uh, they will give instructions and start operating that. So, these are some of the initiatives of ACT. And uh, I will not, uh, I, I want to highlight little on mother tongue and regional languages, as I said, very, very key. Because very, see, I've traveled extensively in the world. I think many of you, uh, you have seen, you know, every country uses their own mother tongue whether it is engineering, medical, dental, everything is taught in that language. Somehow we are, uh, maybe some argument may be advantageous that we got educated in English so we can be a global citizens, like uh, what we have a principle of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, so we can serve the world, which is good. Let's continue with that, we'll not break that. But at the same time, for the disadvantaged people in the rural areas, I think we will provide the content in the local language, we let's start developing. We never had even books in, uh, engineering books in Canada and Tamil and, Tamil was better actually. <laughs> Tamil, we are sitting in Chennai. Chennai is actually running some program and our university was doing in Tamil quite early. But other states had forgotten about it. So AICT has done an excellent effort of 13 different uh, languages of translation of books. Uh, very effective and we are going to our tool, AACT tool on Anuvadini, uh, which is called, we have named it as Anuvadini, which will be a very transformational deep learning AI tool, uh, which uh, not only uh, just text to text translates, it's voice to text and you can insert from voice to uh, your book, you can start dictating and it will start typing in the language you want, which is amazing uh, technology and I think that we are going to give it to all of you. Uh, online so that you could start using them for your benefit. So, and the NEET portal I will also highlight to you very clearly and then ICAS portal and One Nation One Data. So, these are the three, four points and I will, uh, so let me start with NEET. So, the skilling and upskilling, we are here uh, talking about industry academy introduction, which is a very uh, clear uh, case and if you, some of you have observed our uh, uh, approval process handbook this year, we have removed that second rate citizen of uh, part-time program and evening programs. We have, see, some of you might get scared, sir, you have not given provision for us. No, we have given you all freedom <laughs> to run your classes beyond hours. So, but we don't want to call you to call that as a evening program, part-time program, because that then that means you are calling them as a second rate citizen, second degree. So instead of that, you give them a regular degree, but give them an option, conduct your classes in the evening. Sir, how are you going to check whether we conduct or not? That is where we have to come with some mechanism. We are working out a mechanism. So we are, that's why I said wherever, when we say inspection, we are going to come at that. How are you going to do that? That is the validity. So are you really running the classes or not? These are the, some of the things which we wanted to put it through using technology rather than physical presence of our inspectors. So where we are also emphasizing on logical thinking, innovation, creativity, and an ability to solve real life problems remain the most prized skills in today's economy. So we, uh, I think Dr. Batra talked about uh, edutech companies. So this is a space for edutech companies also we have created. So which is uh, paid, unpaid, free, pro bono, all that has been accommodated in our NEET portal. NEET 1.0 was, uh, you can see total registration was only 2 lakh. Registered student was about 1.88 lakh, but now we have graduated to uh, NEET 4.0. NEET 3.0 is, uh, I'll just show you, we have covered higher education, school education courses, vocational courses, skilling and upskilling courses, Indian traditional cultural knowledge system courses also are uploaded by different edutech companies, it is not ours. We have only reviewed, curated and accepted them and also they pay some fee to the AACT so that uh, they are in the system. They don't, uh, once uh, they put it up on the portal, they are available to you and uh, uh, help. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, this, this is one um, uh, uh, need 4.0, we will bring it out. 
3.0 took some time because a lot of change in the administrative system at IACT. So 3.0 we will launch it in a week's time, but next one will be the need 4.0, which will be a very dynamic one if some of the edutech companies are here. That means if you come to us, within a month we will decide whether you are on the platform or not. And then we will not compare with other companies. We, we just evaluate you as independent, uh, your tool. So we will give you. The, this is a very, very excellent, uh, large number of people are now using these courses online. So scaling the way. So we will also, for accommodating some rearrangement of sliders problem, <laughs> it has, this has come early, but anyway, let me say that. Uh, we would like to bring a very similar to internship portal, our placement portal, for particularly rural engineering colleges. This will be launched maybe within a month's time. And I'm very happy to tell you today, to share to you, 500 companies have come forward to be partnering with us, saying that they're all eager to say, okay, we are going to help the rural engineering colleges. Because many of the colleges are, we know that numbers are dwindling, particularly in the core engineering. So, but we require engineers. I don't think uh, there is any, no demand. There is a demand, but uh, the demand is very skewed. That is payment, pay the salary, it is linked to salary. Salaries are so low in core engineering, students will not join. So we need to talk to the industry and see how we can improve for the freshers. So that means we have to impart some skills during the college days. So they are industry ready. So they will start working. So it is a big challenge. I understand it is not a very easily said and done. So with that effort, we have tried to create the internship portal, sorry, placement portal. This is our uh, innovation council, of the, which is the ministries, but it is located in AICT. And all of you know that um, to impart the startup culture and entrepreneurship culture and innovation ideas, uh, we have brought out the policies as well as uh, today we have about 7,000 you know, institute innovation councils. I think many of your institutions have them working very effectively. And now we have a goal of doubling that in two years. To we, we our goal is to ch change that to 15,000 institutions where we are not only saying uh, AICT institutions. We are going to even schools, we are going to uh, universities, uh, all that. So, so uh, the National Innovation and Startup Policy of 2019 for students and faculty has been brought up that we have to change the mindset, not only in our colleges and uh, AICT of real institute, even in IITs we have to change. So yesterday we talked about all that, uh, that how to create uh, incubation, pre-incubation support to the these uh, institutions. So just to good news to you, uh, AICT has uh, closed down all their approval process from uh, regional offices, but those regional offices are converted to called what is called as innovation center. Our council is approved, so that means we will give a technology support to all the institutions who are willing to do the startups and entrepreneurship in locally from regional offices, which are either in Chennai or Trivandrum or Bangalore or Bhopal or uh, Mumbai, Kolkata, all these offices are now converted to called as innovation center. <laughs> in, <huh? laughs> yeah. So, uh, you, you can see the innovation, uh, innovation and startup ecosystem, how it is growing from year to year. I think uh, compliments to the MOE's Innovation Council, uh, which has done a fantastic job. So today, even though I, numbers are a little older, it is across 7,000 uh, institutions. So this is in 22-23. So this year, as I told you, in two years, we wanted to double this to 15,000. So the AICT internship portal is very popular. In the last three months itself, we have got more than 50,000 students registered for this portal. So how many registered? Verified student, about 1.72 crore students are on this portal. So, but what we have to do is, these are all done during pandemic period. So we need to now do physical internship, which has a value to the students. So again, I seek support of the industries uh, in this. This is a very close linkage with industry and academy interaction. It is not only just in the higher education institution. So, and we also require a motivated, energized and capable faculty. We are actually talking to all the IITs. This is another, anyway, we are, all of you know that. I will not read this, but I would like to tell you the new policy which we just came out from the council, IIT council. I spoke to all the IIT directors to train 
from your colleges for three and a half months, students. AICT will support in the emerging area. They will be sent to IITs, three and a half months, training will be done for a regular course in an IIT environment, IIT, NIT and uh, environment, wherein they will take the classes. These are teachers, please, you know, teachers who are deputed from your institution, will cl take classes along with other students of IITs, compete with them and clear the courses and come back to you as a, a to teach emerging areas across the discipline. Okay. So this, uh, I'm still talking to IIT directors and two, three directors have already agreed, including IIT Madras. They have agreed, which is a very, very innovative uh, proposal which we have brought. So as you know that basic FDP, advanced FDP, academic leadership program we are conducting. And one other intervention in technical books, uh, this is where I said uh, AICT has done a tremendous work. So you could see uh, NAP 2020 is AICT started engineering education in Indian languages. I'm very happy to say states offering courses in 11 states are offering. And uh, sir, where, what happens to their job? See, uh, please understand, we are not expecting all of you to start in Tamil, Kannada, no. Don't want also. But those who want to do it also have to see how you are going to place your students. Very, very important. We might also help you. You give us ideas also how to talk to the state government, state public service commissions to put this as a criteria that if you have done an engineering in Tamil, we will place you in PWD or some places locally, you know, local offices in the district and other things. That kind of a political commitment also is required to make this popular. It will take time. But what is AACT is doing is developing languages, uh, material in these local regional languages, which will be available across the world. To just tell you the good news, 47 countries have downloaded from our portal called ECUM these courses which are prepared in different languages. More than 1.5 lakh downloads have happened on this portal in the last four months. Still we have not yet you know, completely allowed all the translation to happen but that, that is the very initial numbers what I am giving you. So you might have seen recently we released Malayalam also and Tamil also is there. IGNU has signed to translate the management courses in Indian languages. We have signed and already some 10-15 books have been done, already translated and ready for usage. Because IGNU had a model curriculum based on AICT, uh, the, all the MBA courses. So we, English uh, texts were available, now we have converted them into this. So this is the recent uh, the book release. And this is the ECUM. ECUM is a platform knowledge unleashed in multiple Bharatiya languages, uh, which is a portal repository of engineering books in different Indian languages. So some of you, are, if you are interested, we are going to organize a big uh, conference in Bangalore, most probably at Indian University of Science, so that there is the credibility to this course, this uh, conference, uh, jointly with the uh, Languages uh, Center at uh, Mysore, AACT and Bharatiya Bhasha Samiti. And uh, this uh, event would be, like, we have named it as for, uh, in, through, Bharatiya Bhasha, okay, a fit, fit Bharatiya Bhasha, <laughs> for, in, through, for Indian languages, in Indian languages, and through Indian languages. That means it could be technology development, it could be software development, it could be translation, it could be many things, you know, voice to text, text to voice, everything, very, very state of the art. Our tool, if some of you get a glimpse of it, I'll tell you, you will all like it because it's a real time. Uh, if there is a speech uh, of Honorable Prime Minister in 20, 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it will be real time translated in different languages. It's possible today. Swayam, I think, is an excellent initiative and the whole, whole world is looking at the, as to actually recently Columbia Institute invited me to give a talk on the Swayam Initiative of Government of India. This, I'm only talking here, telling you about 156 courses, only AICT. We have been given only one task of interdisciplinary nature, yoga and other things. Other things, other, other things are all with IIT Madras and many other institutions. I think AIU is also involved in that. And accreditation is very important, ladies and gentlemen. AICT made a compulsory in 2014, but unfortunately every year we have to uh, give a exemption to you because many of you are not coming. Okay, and many actually private institutions are coming forward, but not many of the government institutions. I feel uh, that uh, all of you 
take this uh, very seriously. Accreditation is not a pass or fail. It is anyway binary. We will give you accreditation or no accreditation. But you have to make an attempt to come to uh, ACT, uh, sorry, to NBA uh, for the subject uh, program accreditation and knack for the other thing. Hopefully there are some initiatives which uh, uh, may be coming through a combined effort of NAC and NBA. Luckily, we have now uh, chairman of NBA and NAC together. <laughs> the same person is looking after. So there will be a transformative uh, initiatives. And ODL institutes are also increasing to show that we are not discriminating ODL and vocational and all these. So this is another initiative for scientists uh, who are doing a lot of free fundamental research in engineering institutions. ISTEM is an initiative for Indian Institute of Science. They have come together all the national uh, statistic equipment, very high state and high end equipment available on one single platform. So now you will be able to book it and uh, use that for your research purposes. So AICT actually was thinking of bringing out a scheme to support you financially also. We will give you some funds so that you will only use it for paying the rent for those equipments for the time allotted. So that means now we are bringing the entire state of the art facility to your college through online. That means you don't need to physically go there. You can book it online, do your experiments, conduct your, uh, I mean, get your results online. Uh, you have to pay some fee that initially we will uh, provide you from AICT. So the last is the idea labs. I think some of uh, colleges have Chennai Institute of Technology as an idea lab. Similarly, many institutions, we have created 100 idea labs wherein you know, students have an experiential learning. So this is the distribution of learning uh, through the idea lab network, about 93 are there, idea lab networks. And then the Indian knowledge system, the last two slides I have, I'll just talk about two slides and close my talk. So Indian knowledge system is very critical, as I told you, all of you have to have patience. It's not going to happen, and, but one thing I want to tell you, remove from your mind, this is a pseudoscience. No, it is not a pseudoscience. It's a real science, but you, that is what you have to do. We are asking you to do that science. <laughs> Prove that they are all not uh, pseudo. So better is, you know, unless we dwell ourselves into it, how do we say uh, pseudo? That's the question I am putting in front of you. So let's, uh, we have established 76 IK centers involved in one of those centers. Uh, and uh, uh, funding for 210 transformational research projects in IKS has been funded by the ministry's IKS division and establishment of IKS MIC program for technology demonstration, and establishment of virtual IKS innovation hub being implemented, which is announced, and the higher education initiative, we have uh, supported 4,000 internship. So the num numbers what uh, Professor Ganti Murthy has done is mind-boggling. I, uh, I think it's a very excellent initiative, and we need to support this initiative. I uh, request, and it should start from school education. That's why we said we have also started school education initiative. Then curriculum development in the Indian knowledge system. So anything by force we will not put, but uh, by voluntary, you know, we should start looking at it. So these are all I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, valuable time and uh, very happy uh, that uh, we practice all these uh, very sincerely in all in our institutions and reach to more and more students who will be future ready, industry ready students. Uh, so that you know we don't have a shortage of jobs and we don't need to be scared of uh, closing down our institutions. I think we should revive these institutions. I am very positive that all our engineering colleges will come to life because we, we don't require engineers only for our country. The people will ask, where are the jobs? Jobs is in your mind. <laughs> so because today jobs are changing. Chat GPT has come and it will change all the jobs. So it is a dynamic process. So you please give confidence to your students so that there are plenty available and we are global citizens. Today, Indian uh, diaspora is a, a, across the world and uh, we can speak English confidently and present our ideas, thought process. We accept things. So I think we'll be successful. That, I think that message should go very strong to everyone in the world. And then, you know, there is a good possibility by 2047 will be a wish for Guru again. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jain.